can never really find a good sound effect of a guy getting hit in the head with a shovel. Good evening, sir. May I interest you in our soup de jour? Shut the fuck up, you goddamn fuckhole! You piece of shit! And the number one gayest moment ever in music, Y M C A. Village people. That would have been a great cue, Eric, you ass. Yeah, well. Did Eric miss a cue? Not really, because this bit stinks. Well, we're just talking. It's not a bit even. My dad took me to see the village people when I was a little boy. Oh. What? Really? In concert. I saw them in concert. Why would your dad take you to see the village people? I don't know. Why would I play Monster Rain? How many questions are we going to ask? I'm just saying that I went to see the village people and Sister Sledge was the opening band. So was he a fan of the village people? No, I was. I had all their records. And you were fan. Wow, that's a big surprise. YMCA, I had in the Navy, I had uh, uh, what was Macho, the Macho Man. Man was great, and the live one, Live and Sleazy. You were the strangest little kid. <laughs> Just a little and weirdo. And he's a normal man? No. He, How did you discover the village people? They were huge in the 70s. Or the, no, they, no, 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 dude. There was knowing about the village people and then discovering the village people. I don't know. But them. I remember the construction crew Like cover. I discovered in my little brain Zeppelin, Black Sabbath. We yes. have something in common. I, I was a big Sabbath fan when I first uh, started you know, getting into music. Village people. You knew the songs, you heard them a lot, but it wasn't like, I need to buy their albums. You must have been an AM listener. Oh my person. God, they're coming to the Nassau Coliseum. I got to wait online and get my ticket. Two, Why would you get the, into the that two, band? The two concerts in the 70s my dad took me to were Kiss at the Garden um, and the Village People. And did you realize, looking around, what didn't, was in the audience? I don't remember it, dude. I didn't even know they were gay. I had no yeah. idea. I mean, you know, Felipe Rose, the uh, the Indian, I probably would have realized was gayer. Wait, Victor Willis, wait, wait, the lead wait, singer, wait, I heard wait, wasn't wait, gay. Wait, 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 wait. You yeah. know the names of the... I know a couple of the names. Felipe Rose and, uh, you know, Victor Willis, the lead singer. Oh, man. Who doesn't know that? I am what I am. I mean, I should have known that that was a gay song. Oh, right. my God. Club Soda Kenny. Hi, Kenny. I didn't even know you entered the studio, Kenny. Hello, everybody. How are you? I have a question for Jimmy Kins. Sure. Why would you be coming into the city today? I just... I'm just wondering. To see your lovely face. Ah. Uh -huh. Why don't you raise the mic up instead of hunching over there? Uh -huh. like you're six, uh -huh. eight. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Have to raise the mic up to the ceiling. Yeah, Look yeah. at him. I'm starting to think there might be something going on today, Anthony. Huh. Huh. C A. Why am I gay? Now I wanted to ask Jimmy Kins at at that uh, concert. Is that where you learned how to rub up against people? No, I don't remember. Oh, frottage? I engaged in frottage in high school, it's called. Frottage. Well, I actually almost got thrown out of school because I did it to a teacher. Where you bump into a girl's ass with your hand and you see if you can get both cheeks. I did it to Miss. I don't want to say last name. Wow. Thing. I did it to a, a teacher. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Fr it's called frottage? Frottage is the actual fetish of rubbing your cock on people. I would do that all the time. And uh, one time I did it to a teacher in the in the pool area. Um, Miss Dunn, her name was. And she Wait, had a, you try to rub your cock on two cheeks? Or, or your, your hand, hand, whatever you could get. I, getting over that butt crack is a... Cheek, I used to go home and whack off thinking about how many cheeks I got. And I got Miss Dunn. We were in the pool area. I walked by. It was just me and her walking by. And I just grazed. It was called grazing. I grazed her ass. And I felt her spin and glare at me. And I just kept walking. Oh, you little creep. And it was your, <laughs> yeah. You was definitely your, got her with your junk, not your no, hand? No, no, no. My hand. My hand. Oh, which okay, was worse. Right. It was like I grabbed her ass. I, in, yeah. in the back of my hand. Both knuckles across in the, in the little slope. Cheek, crack, cheek. Uh, we was better than leaving, him. leaving some chocolate treaty just ate on <laughs> our, our butt. My high little school. Telltale fingerprints. <laughs> My high school was known for uh, ETs. What were those? Elbow tits. Oh. That's too violent. I, you couldn't get a good feel with an ET. No, no it wasn't like a, a feel with no, it was, elbow No, it was either. as soft as possible, too. But, I mean, even just the elbow you know, is a hard bone, I'm saying. Just walking by, you just, you know, walk with your elbows a little higher. That's all. Dude, I used to love... It was a weird thing in my high school. Everyone t used to talk about it. The wow. ETs. You my, get any ETs today? My favorite girl was Liz. She was a senior. I was a freshman. I used to always try to bump into her because she was juicy, man. I would look at girls and just figure I have to graze her somehow. They would I'd... probably all know and go, oh, here comes that creepy Jimmy kid. Do you, know, you still do that? No, no. No, it's actually... I'll avoid it now. It feels too violating. No, I, I don't do that at all anymore. So e it'll, ever. What the hell was that? So the village people—that's that's. that's they were good live. Sister Sledge, we are family, was a big hit. Who oh, didn't enjoy hit Sister hit Sledge? Did you have village people posters in your room? I might have. Oh I, don't um, oh I don't remember. I don't remember. Would you dress God. up like? I, no, I didn't dress oh, up. Oh, that would have been cute. People. No, Jimmy I Jimmy went not. dressed up like a little cowboy or something. No, I was. I think Glenn was one of the guys too. I don't remember all their names. Of course, it was Glenn. There was the construction worker, of course, and 
But I didn't know they were gay. I didn't get it. Uh, so yeah, you know, I didn't know kid. village meant, you know, 14th Street to Houston. I mean, I didn't realize that. You thought it was like a village. Like a village of cool people. Right. Cool. Where, where, where all men worked and cool sang. Cool people. They were cool. The Indian was my favorite. Growing up, the Indian was my favorite. I thought was he was the coolest, yeah. Yeah. Dude, I was about 10 and I knew they were gay. And I didn't even know what gay meant. No, I was very young. I didn't understand. I didn't know that. I just that. knew that that's not how they dress when they're out on the street doing those professions. All I these didn't things know. add up, though. The monster rain, this, the, the, the playing asteroids for a I was a weirdo. Record. You were a weird the, little kid. Don't say was. I used to fantasize. That bothers <laughs> me that you you think that there's a was in that sentence. Kiss were my heroes growing up. Kiss in the 70s. Well, Kiss was all our heroes. And I used to fantasize. This I is, bought every Kiss album. So did I. Well, it was bought for me. But I used to fantasize about Kiss. Not sexually, but they, they would come to my I house. I had a problem that they wore makeup. I was a little uncomfortable no, with the Kiss makeup. That's why thing. I liked them. That's why, because they were like <laughs> superheroes. They were like superheroes. I got to hear this fantasy. Right. That they would come. This was a recurring one. That Kiss would come to my apartment and hurt me and kick me down the stairs and beat me. <laughs> and then hug me and love me and make me feel better. <laughs> You're kidding. No. To please tell me. Oh, no. That was, a this is a joke. that was a recurring fantasy. It was never sexual, though. It was about, like, I don't know why I associated because I had a pretty normal household. I always associated that uncomfortability with love. Yeah. Have you ever met his parents? They're very nice, normal people. Yeah, They're the yeah. nicest people you'll ever never meet. Never abusive. And they, they were just, they were really that great you know to grow up with. So well, yeah, where did I know, this yeah. come from? Well, my dad drank a little abuse. Why sure. would you have this fantasy? Don't that know. Kiss, Kiss comes to your house. Now, now do yes. they knock? Or are they just there? Don't remember. I just I can just remember my steps in my house and picturing Paul and Gene and all of them loving me and making me feel better and hugging me and telling me I was but a good boy. But they're the ones that beat you. That's the oddness of it. I don't know where it's... Look, why would I fantasize about... Why would my little play... My favorite play friend... I had two, two play friends growing up. One was a middle-aged woman named Helen with a beehive hairdo. That was, I don't know where that came from. That was one of my imaginary friends. And imaginary one friend was named Helen. Helen, Helen yeah, with a beehive hairdo. And one was Keep a... Keep tabs on all this, people. You'll be tested. One was a little boy who looked... Who was me, but he wore a cape, and his name was Jimmy Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> and me... And me and... I can't absorb all this stuff. It, you're going too quickly. It's all true. I want to remember all of this. And me and Jimmy Robinson hated Jimmy Norton. That I remember. You know... Wait, wait. You... And Jimmy Robinson. My fantasy friend was Jimmy Robinson, but it was me in a and cape. You. But how could you and him hate you? Gee, I don't know. I, that was just the fantasy that I would play with Jimmy Robinson. And, and Jimmy Norton was another fantasy character. I mean, sure, there's you know, psychologists all over the tri-state area writing oh this down. Oh, my wow. God. I don't know. personality crap. No, 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 no. I don't think it was split personality. It was just this weird self-esteem stuff. Did and you say and hate him. Did you talk to Jimmy Robinson? Oh, yeah. I remember. I can, my only memory of like a vivid... Jimmy Robinson! My only... Because I thought he was cool from Lost in Space. Will Robinson. Will Robinson. Cool. Yeah, Jimmy Robinson. So my only f real memory of Jimmy Robinson was him riding a tricycle, which was me with his cape on flowing behind him. I, that's how young I was. I don't know where it came from. Did it oh. say anything on your cape? No, it was just a plain cape, as all no. cool people had. You no don't have anything JR on, your cape. on your chest? No, 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 no. Bum, bum, bum. I think you were touched at a very, very young it's age. It's very possible, dude. I mean, but very, like under five. There's other things that contribute to self esteem, too. You know, it's not necessarily that. It doesn't always have to be that. It, it, you you know, know, I'm just going to throw this out there because I know it's a hacky radio bit, but I don't know. We, would you ever go under hypnosis? I've tried already. On they our just, show? No. They, well, they, they tried. I can't be hypnotized. They tried on Tough Crowd recently because there, there was a really funny idea. I don't know what they were going to have me do, but they were going to hypnotize me to do something. And then Patrice, they were going to try to hypnotize. Like every time Colin said a certain word, Patrice would just shut up because he would always talk over people. So that, that was, but I can't be hypnotized. I can't yeah. relax enough. Nah. I try to. And the guy, the guy's like, Can you're you getting imagine sleepy. Him under hypnosis with like a real expert? I, this guy was an expert. No, I'm just saying, if we did it on the show, no, I can't be. Yeah, I, I'm too easily I don't distracted. Buy any of that anyway. Um, little okay. Now, now you covered the Jimmy Robinson. What about the woman now that was your playmate? I don't what know where she, she came do? from. Uh, Helen was my play. I don't know where Helen. she. My Helen, an older. That's like a librarian. Or yes. A was that the type of woman she was? Yeah, she was in her. Uh, got like, I'm picturing her right now. After she had, like, Helen Keller. No, it wasn't after Helen Keller. It was she? You, a, you could picture what she looked like as a real person. Oh yeah, head. yeah, yeah. She actually maybe I saw a picture of my mother when she was very young because it, it reminds me a little bit of my mom, like from yeah. the '60s, who I you know obviously was before I was born. But Helen had a beehive hairdo, frosted. And uh, she was my imaginary friend, was Helen. I don't know why. I love this stuff, It's man. completely true. It is insane. That's bizarre. Every day, I learn a little more about what just a little creep you are. <laughs> just a frightening little messed up kid. Oh, it was a
I was love awful. it. Stop with the were. No, were, it's, the no, no. You know what it is? Were and was is fine because now he's an adult who makes his own decisions. It's based on, you know, yeah. what he wants to do. He's a freewheeling guy. If he wants to buy hookers and have them crap on him, that's fine. You're an adult. As a kid, it's creepy. Because kids do things like play with their friends, with toys. They enjoy Christmas. They enjoy their parents. They enjoy. They don't make up little playmates that are them with capes and little school marm type playmates that are fifty <laughs> friggin' years old with beehive hairdos. They don't play Monster Rain. They don't. They, they don't enjoy the village people. It's just a creepy now, little thing. The village people. The, the only thing you're wrong about is the village people, because they were very big back then. And again, when you're that Maybe young, kid, you don't recognize. They, they were like colorful and fun. Makeup. They had the costumes. I love Kiss for that reason too. There it's you like, go. Oh, the Kiss beating story. You know That's what? odd. Yeah. I don't think we can find another listener that uh, grew up listening to the Village People. I guarantee you can. No, no way, dude. They were in the seventies, man. When you were, they were I huge. Would, I would hear them when I'm driving. You know, my uh, mother. We all uh, knew who they were, but, listen, you, but you didn't become a fan of the Village People. You did it. Well, back then it was a There whole... was not one person in my high school that went around saying, you know, he liked the village. Well, because there was a school. disco rock split back then. I didn't know about that. I was a little too young. Oh, how old were you? High when school, you were junior, high, whatever. How, when were the village people popular? 78? So I was 10. All right. He's 10 years old. So it's different, you know. I was 11 when I saw... My, my father took me to see Kiss in the Garden. I think Cheap Trick opened in uh, December 16th of 79 on the Alive 2 tour. I so, could even buy that you're 10 and you're a... Village yeah. people fan, not knowing, you know, yeah. that's fine. The Kiss thing, you'd be a Kiss fan, that's fine. But you would be a Kiss fan without the images of them beating you up and then Granted, coddling you and saying it's all going to be okay. And hugging. I told you, I, I got my picture with Kiss recently. The first time I'd ever met, I mean, with Gene, I was starstruck. You were scared you're going to get bitch slapped by Paul Stanley. Dude, when he when Did he Paul you allow Paul fantasy? Stanley to bitch slap you? He didn't bitch slap. Oh, in the thing, he put it the behind the. the in the, your fantasy, did he hold your head close to his puffy hair chest? No, dude, it wasn't about sexual Hello, stuff. Hello, everybody. Dude, we're he, gonna fuck. cuddle Jim and Norton. He from behind me. I had the photo. You can see the photo. I'm standing there. He reaches around behind me and puts his arm on my chest. This is last November. I tilted my head and put it on his bicep. It was like a childhood that hero thing. It. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it was like I almost, was, I almost held his arms. I didn't it do it. It was your fantasy come true. It wasn't about sex. or I'm not a, you know, I don't want to touch Paul Stanley, but it was like, I, I, it's like a superhero. That's you, another liked, part of the weirdness. Uh, for you to touch him. Yeah, probably. That's another part of the weirdness. If you said you you had some kind of physical attraction Ugh. and it was a sexual thing, it would be disgusting to me, uh, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the the thing is, it's creepy yeah. that you just wanted them to say, you know, to, to like your company and love you. And yeah, and be my friend and hug me. Beating you. After kicking me down the steps and beating me up. That is so weird. Oh. I got to play the Monster Rain thing. We're not taking a break, yeah. but Monster Rain, um, the commercial by Laszlo yeah. from GTA. It's not in GTA, but Laszlo decided to, to put this together for us. Check it out. He was just the boy next door. Mikey, where are you? <laughs> it's a game for kids that's sweeping the country. Jimmy, what are you doing? Jesus H. Christ, my little baby! Monster Rain. Monster Rain. The game you play under the porch. Monster Rain. <laughs> I like that one, man. It's hilarious. That is bizarre, though, man. Yeah, I know. It's a little odd. I, don't, I, grab, I admit it. I don't know where it comes from or what it is. Jimmy Robinson. <laughs> the cape. Well, here's a guy that also listens to the village people. I, I'm I'm stupefied today. Steve, what's up? Hey, I'm, I'm using Steve because I ain't even giving my real name. <laughs> I got to back up, Jim. I, I honestly listen to the village people. Really? How old are you? I mean, I, all right, listen. We all heard them on the radio. I mean, did, did you consider yourself a fan? Yep. How old were you? So weird. Two years older than you, Jim. All right, so yeah, you were 12, 13. I mean, it's pretty normal. They were, they were, they were kind of cool guys you thought back then. <laughs> like I said, I'm saying Steve because I'm in Brooklyn. Live and sleazy. You know, that was a good song when you were I have no, I, I only know a couple of the hits. That's about it. In the Navy? They had a few well, in ones. the Navy, I, I know. YMCA, obviously everybody knows, but there's a couple of... Uh... Macho Man? You oh, can't yeah, go to a man. wedding without hearing, like, YMCA or no, something at the end of the night. Yeah. So. And the uh, Yankees... Uh, that awful Fields grounds crew. crew. Yeah. The grounds oh, that's crew right. come out and... What's that uh, stand Chris? for with the village people? Young men carry AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> Chris from Boston. Hey guys, can you picture uh, little Jim in his little Kiss Army makeup 
with a little black tear running down his face after getting his ass kicked by grown men in cat makeup. <laughs> <laughs> I never dressed up like Kiss. No. Never wore the Kiss oh, makeup. Oh, well, that fixes everything. It would almost be sacrilegious. I felt that I couldn't. Really? Yeah, you, no, you, I never dressed up like Kiss. You were a huge Kiss fan then. <sighs> Beyond. Wow. Dude, my father had to buy tickets six months in advance, and we were almost in the top row in the garden. That's how Kiss in the 70s was bigger than anybody is And was the night of the concert like, this was a big thing, it was going to be amazing. Dude, I was a god in the neighborhood. No one else could get tickets. They're like, Jimmy's going to see Kiss. This is in August. In December, he's going to see Kiss. Yeah. I couldn't believe my dad got me tickets. Tell him to get out from under the porch. It's time to go to Kiss. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe there's another reason you were a god in the neighborhood. <laughs> sucking all their wieners. <laughs> <laughs> you think you would get better tickets for all the sucking you did as a kid. My God. I still didn't tell you about the brother and sister that I used to have sit on my face so I could smell their pee-stained underwear. I'll tell you about that someday. Oh, Jesus. Considering the show really blows today, a maybe you should pull that one sister? out of your back pocket. Yeah, I can't say their names, but when I was that young. Why the, why the brother, too? I didn't, again, it wasn't a sex. It was just the smell of piss. It wasn't him sexually. Was actually, it was you a, or Jimmy Robinson? That was I was, unfortunately, Jimmy Norton. I'd love to blame that one on Helen, but I think she was trying to ixnay on the face-sitting A. <laughs> But no, it wasn't about the the one I was attracted to the sister actually. That was the girl that I was naked one time in front of me, and I loved her ass so much. I was sitting next to some sticker bushes, and I'm like, "You can either sit in my lap or sit in the sticker bushes." And she sat in the sticker bushes, which Aww. destroyed my little self esteem. That uh, and how old were you? Again, second, third grade. I moved. See, I had no I moved clue about this stuff when I was out of that up. neighborhood. Uh, Halloween of fourth grade, which is the very beginning of fourth grade. So anything that I'm talking about this stuff all happened before Halloween of right. fourth grade. All of it. Yeah. And a brother and sister. Not at the same time, but Not yeah. The they time. both would pee their pants. I imagine they had a wonderful upbringing. <laughs> Not at the same time. No, I mean, it wasn't some weird... And it wasn't even a sexual thing. It, it wasn't smell. some weird, he starts saying. See, we could almost let you off the hook if it was them together, because then you could say, well, I did it because the sister... I don't know, but th that yeah. means you were just... Under the porch with the... No, guy. no, this was behind the bushes. <laughs> behind the, the bushes. Yeah. And what would you say, uh, take Adult off your pants? No, 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 with pants on. No, it was never nude. Oh, oh, The only one I wanted to see nude was the sister, who I, who I had like, a real crush on. I, I would love her. to take a black light to his childhood home. Oh. Behind the bushes, under the porch. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you'd you say, uh, uh, sit on my face? Don't remember how it would go. I honestly don't remember. I can just remember liking the smell. Yeah, there's got to be a, like, a, a beginning to that, though. I'm sure there is. Probably happened during wrestling and I would pretend to lose. I don't know. Oh, got you. Yeah, Do not like know. That. All right. Let's, uh... But, but the girl I really had a crush on. She was a year older than me. So glad yeah. we're getting the gay out of where the show. Where is she buried now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where can we find her? Uh, Brian wow. from VA, what's up? Oh, man, I, I'm telling you guys, you got to get the gay out the radio. You got to get rid of Norton, man. That's listen, not gay. What's gay about listen, that? Listen, it's listen weird. To the show for the last month, man, you're getting subliminal messages across the radio that Norton's gay from five years old playing Monster Rain to talking about. It's kids, the weird the thing. He's, he's the le last person that uh, you would think is gay. He's not gay. Yeah, dude, I opened up about the childhood. How many guys, maybe some haven't, but a tremendous amount of people did stuff in their childhood. They're just they're too afraid to be open about. It. Who cares? I just think Norton's hiding something. He's afraid to come out because hiding he something. Like I wish he would hide something. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude! I, I wish. I love I women. I don't know if he'd suck one, but I believe he'd hold it in his mouth till the swelling went down. We have to hear uh, uh, Norton talk about a different woman almost every day. The guy's obsessed with women. Mr. Yeah, Norton but, is mean, very on, secure Red in Boy? his sexuality. Yeah. There you go. Thank you, Kenny. Jesus, Jimmy, didn't you ever do normal things like play Little League or go to yes. Disney World? I, was, I, I went to Disney World as a young man with my girlfriend, and I played Little League. I was a pitcher. I was I I have pictures of Not myself. Not a catcher. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I well no in little league I played most I played a lot of outfield. Yeah. Like I told you I used to spin in a circle once to the right, and I remember one time I was playing for Young's Glass Service and Mr. Wasenta was my uh, coach Wasenta, and I would spin in the circle to the right in the outfield, and I'll never forget from the dugout he screams, "Hey Jimmy, what are you a ballerina?" In front of like the other team oh, and my team. Boy. Yeah, it was nothing but humiliation. Was that uh, Chico's Bail Bonds was the other team sponsor? <laughs> <right>? <laughs> Believe they're Little League. The, they're remaking that movie. Little League was when I had my first gay experience. I was playing catcher, and the umpire checked me for a cup. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> I love the delivery. <laughs> I'm so glad you protect us. Sparky, what's up? Hey guys, how is it? Uh, how is it? Hi, Sparky. It's Mississippi hey. checking in. Hey, Jimmy's normal. Leave the poor man alone. We used to listen to 
uh, used to listen to ABBA and, and the village people. And, you know, we listened to all that as kids, and we played the silly games. Uh, you know, she, we, my sister used to have a tea party where her collie dog, her female collie dog, was her husband, and I was the baby. Wow. Yes. <laughs> So, you know, I used to have dreams about sleeping with my big Aunt Jemima black nanny when I was a little kid. Oh, yeah? <laughs> it's pretty normal stuff when you're a kid. Yeah, I mean, it, it, Jimmy's all right. Thank I mean, you. He may be a little weird now, but he was all right as a kid. <laughs> yeah, it's just that you, you don't know. You just know certain things are taboo or whatever. You don't know why. I mean, you know, you're too young. I, I didn't right. get rods back then. Right. right. You just, you're just, you're experiencing things. I mean, you're just learning you yeah. don't really know that it's bad huh. it feels good all right well, boy does it thank you sparky joe has <laughs> i remember being friends with uh casper the friendly ghost that was about as weird as i got as a kid i was actually friends with him and he came over the house and you know burned and a, i played with him burned a cross on someone's lawn <laughs> 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 hey that's not casper yeah. wait a, a minute new neighbors <laughs> yeah. from west virginia right. there's a for sale sign in front of the wilson's house <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. Casper the Friendly Ghost. Casper the Friendly Ghost was my uh, imaginary, like imaginary play, friend. play friend. Yeah. And what would you do with Casper? I would go out in the backyard, play with the dog, dig holes in the ground, throw rocks. You Did know. you see Casper? Um, like, I, I don't think I had an imaginary friend growing up. When you have one of these imaginary friends, do you actually see them? Oh, yes, you visualize them, yes. Yeah, I, I visualize, but never saw, but you... Well, not saw... I mean, in your mind, are you seeing yeah. Casper, the friendly ghost, as you're playing yeah, with yeah. the dog? You look up to talk to him, you know, if you're sure. digging a hole in the ground, you're like, hey, you know, this Some is people fun. say those are ghosts, real live ghosts, and they only, only kids was. can see them. Casper. Casper, the friendly ghost, see right through him. Oh, <laughs> That's weird. But, Someone has, but that's about as weird as it got with me. It was never he never kicked my ass and then held me. <laughs> that's so weird. Joe in Delaware has a theory on Jim's uh Jim's uh stuff here. What, uh -oh. Go ahead, Joe. Hey Jimmy. Hi Joe. How you doing? Welcome to the radio today. program. Uh, good to be here, man. I got your problem figured out for you. Uh, all right. You the Helen woman was uh, the chick who molested you before you were five. Little Jimmy Robinson with the cape was a superhero who you wished you could be to fight her off. Uh -huh. And uh, that's why you need Kiss to abuse you and then coddle you. Because it's your fault, but it's okay. Possibly, yeah. I mean, I don't know if I was abused by a woman named Helen, to be honest with you. I don't know if Jimmy Robinson was going to help. Who knows? All kidding aside, do you think you were abused as a kid? To be honest with you, probably not. I don't. I'm not going to say definitely no, but I. I mean, I'm pretty open about searching for the memories and stuff like that. And anything that happened at that age was just consensual stuff with kids my age. It's almost like it's possible somebody I did it with was abused and introduced me to it. I don't know, but they were all my uh -huh. age. It was never an adult. It was never a creepy uncle. It was. It was always. You know what I mean? Like I remember the first girl that put her ass in my face. Her name was Janice in Devil's Creek, the woods between um, River Heights and Marina Gardens, the two apartments. And I, she was a year, I get a year older than me, and I put my face against her cool ass cheeks, and I still love asses today. So a lot of it might have just been normal mm -hmm. exploration. All right, let's say uh, hi to Brandon in Atlantic City. Yo, Opie, I got a question for you. Yeah. Why are you trashing Jimmy about having fantasies of men beating him up, and you went to college and had it done? <laughs> Thank you, man. Good point. <laughs> at, least, at least Gene Simmons never asked me to pick up a yummy treat with my asshole <laughs> and drop it on Peter Chris's porch. <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess I should have known better. Yeah. <laughs> you have the excuse of youth. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That was an excellent point. <laughs> All right. I, I have nothing on that one. Then Kiss made me lie on my stomach in the basement, and they poured hot sauce and made me exercise. All right. That uh, wasn't my story. No, I'm just All right. <laughs> okay. Let's go to Ed in Jersey. Hey, Ed. Hey, what's up, guys? Good what's morning. Up? Hi, Ed. I, uh, Jimmy, I, if I may revert back to uh, you talking about Miss Dunn and playing frontage. Mm -hmm. Is she a gym teacher? Uh, no, she was not. Oh, then I apologize for wasting your time because there was a girl, there was a wood teacher, Miss Dunn, in my school, and everyone banged her. I thought. Where was, was your school? Uh, Clifton. It was Jersey still, but a little north. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. no the, 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 the woman I think of, like, students banged her? Oh, yeah. Like, it, she would sit in the lunchroom with the kids that she was banging. It was like several, not Very even nice. one, like all the jocks. No, I didn't go to school in Clifton anyway. No, you went Plainfield, like that area, right? No, 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 no. I went to to uh, another one now, but no, it, she was not a gym teacher. <clears throat> now I feel like a complete ass. Never mind. Why? It's all right. It's still a good story. All right. 
Well, well, thank you. Bill from North Carolina. What's up, Bill? Man, first off, man, I'm just kind of pissed off at you guys as interns, man. They suck ass. Why? Why? They're great. No, man. It's, now I've come up here to give you guys a story here like Monday. It was just freaking killer. It would have perfectly segged into what you guys are talking about. And then today with uh, Jeffrey on there talking about the broken bones, I called back up again to kind of put it in there. So it was. Uh, oh, you're the guy. I, I, I already know who you are because you call every day. You're the guy that uh, has a story. Watch how smart I am. Has a story about a stripper that broke her arm. While and, doing then was sex, and then was sexually assaulted while she was down on the ground. What? It, yes. I mean, that's, that's kind of like I was telling them. What happened was, I'm a police officer. I called to, a, to an assault at a strip joint here. We get there, and what had happened is one of the strippers went to jump on the brass pole, and when she did, she missed or something, but she landed and broke both her bones in her right arm. I guess it's her radius and ulna. And it was open fracture, so the bones are hanging out. And while she's curled up in the fetal position on the stage, one of the guys on the floor, you know, one of the patrons, he decides to freaking slam his fingers in and out of her. And I quote from the guy there was, it was like Indiana Jones reaching under the wall to grab his hat. She just slammed, her, his, slammed his hands in her and slammed her hands back out of her. And to me, I'm sorry, that's freaking funny. I don't care who you are. And if you guys don't think that's funny, well, that's just crazy. You just cut it off anyway. Fucking cocksuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I love the, deje the dejected hang up when you hear cocksuckers. <laughs> imagine, longer imagine if you never heard that story. You're right. <laughs> Good point, Ken. John from New York City. What's up, John? Hey, guys. I remember it was 1979. I remember like it was yesterday. My parents were going out, and I said, listen, what am I going to do at home at night? Why don't you get me an album? And they bought me I'm Ready for the 80s. Oh. Village, village people. <laughs> parents <laughs> thinking they know what their kid wants. Exactly. So I remember there was a channel uh, called Uptown. It was only in their bedroom. I remember listening to Village People and watching this channel. It was like a porno channel and mm. masturbating while Village People were playing on it. Wow. Oh, parents yeah. are out. You could get a good jack in. Yeah. Parents are out. I feel like I'm in therapy. Remember that uh, when Showtime nice first started? They used to do that exercise show <laughs> where it was girls in these leotards on these rotating round platforms, and they would just do exercises, and the cameras would drift by him and slowly, like, just give a crotch shot and then pan back a little bit and then... That's a gr I had no clue. Really? No, yeah, not on that one. Yeah, going on on uh, Showtime I when whacked, it first started. I whacked to uh, I Dream of Dreamy. Yeah. I, Who's Dreamy? I, I Dream of Genie. Oh. <laughs> I Dream of Trini Lopez. I Dream of Trini. <laughs> not, I Dream of Genie. Nothing was better than Petticoat Junction. Oh, with the three girls up oh, in the water tower? I'll say. You know something? That was a very, like, hot thing as a kid watching that. And it was a split second. It was the, the girls from Petticoat Junction, and they were bathing, I guess, in the county water supply. <laughs> they're in the uh, water tower, and uh, their towels were hanging up on the, end of the, on the edge of the tower. And they would peek over the top and kind of give a little flirtatious look and then pull their towel off. And you knew they were naked because they were bathing. And they'd show their bare shoulders. And it was really, really hot when you were a kid seeing that. Because you just imagined. Say. Yeah. Well, you said it, Kenny. Jason from PA. What's up, Jason? Hey, I know what happened to our poor little Jimmy Norton. Okay. What, Jason? He was about three years old. He's driving in the car with his dad. And some asshole on the radio told him Santa didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and uh, drink the magic juice. That, that's funny. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Take care. All right. Let's uh, go to Kevin in Buffalo. Hey, Kevin. Hey, what's happening? What's up? Yeah, I just wanted to let you know I got wowed by a car full of teenage girls yesterday. Oh, Ooh. there you go. Told nice. You. That wow works wow. like a charm, I'm telling you. Yep. Get yeah, that wow on your ride and, uh, and and watch the fun ensue. Yes. Women see the wow on the car, and uh, they, they'll uh, if, they, if they're feeling it, they'll wow you. Yes, they will. Teenagers. Teenage. Teenage wow. Teen wow. <laughs> mean old Mr. Gravity ain't set in yet. Very nice. The only thing that can make wow better. All right. And I, you can get your wow stickers by going to opianthony.com. There's a place uh -huh. to fill in your hey, info. Yes. Can I make a request? 
that guy, I'm, I'm getting a half a rod thinking about this teacher banging people. That guy who said the teacher banged people at Clifton, can you call one of the interns and off air leave her real name and I'll, and I'll let you know if it was the same teacher I had. Because if I find out my teacher switched to the other school and was banging people, I'm going to whack my bag for six months. Just thinking about that. Oh. I've been so excited. Oh. Yeah, but do it off the air. I don't want to say her real name on the air. All right, let's uh, go to Keith in, uh, well, Keith on Long Island. What's up, Keith? What's up, guys? How hey. are you? Hey. Hi, Keith. A little messed up story. I mean, a lot of people played doctor when they were a little kid. And uh, I remember, I have a vivid memory of, of playing doctor with this girl behind the bookcase in preschool. And uh, she bumped into me uh, a little later in life after we got out of uh, high school, and we brought it up. And uh, apparently, though, uh, we got caught one time by our teacher and didn't stop us. Oh. Preschool teacher, man, watched us playing doctor. Oh, oh little kids playing a uh, little doctor with the, each other, and the, the teacher just watched? Just kind of watched. I don't remember, but she right. has a vivid memory of this. Wow. Well, what exactly did you do? Uh, I remember she used to take down her pants, and we would go behind the bookcase, and I would just kind of investigate the area at a wee four years old. And then what? That was it. I mean, as far as my memory is concerned, that was it. But apparently we got in trouble one time, but we, we, didn't, we didn't have to stop doing it. The teacher just watched us playing. And then what happened? Nothing. Are you sure you're making this up? Okay. How do we get verification? <laughs> I wouldn't know how to help you there. Why not? <laughs> he fell <found> out. <laughs> I do recall doing something um, uh -oh. when I was about 10. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess my sister was about 7 or something. And she was having a slumber party over the house and um she had a little friends over and they put on their little nightgowns and uh i would i would make them have headstand competitions against the wall because their nightgowns would flop over their heads genius and I'd, I'd be able to look at them in their uh little underwear uh, uh yeah up against the wall you know upside down and I'd see their their little panties. Didn't we do that same stunt in Massachusetts? It still works like a charm. <laughs> Headstand contest. Go ahead. And weren't we thirty years old? <laughs> ah, that happens. Sure. Hey, if something's good, you stick with it. If it works. I remember one time, and this was at one slumber party. Yeah. There was this uh, there was this girl lived down the street. And I was doing the headstand contest thing. They were wearing their nightgowns. And she did the headstand. And she was wearing these panties that were so loose that the leg hole slipped to the side. And I saw everything. It wasn't just, like, panties. saw everything. And was like, I couldn't even deal with it. Yeah, it's I hot. thought my eyes were going to pop out of my head. As wow, a weird. kid, you're just like, like a boil was going on in my head. It was uh, My brain was boiling. Nice. All right, we're going to take a break, Ann. Remind me to tell you about the time I got caught staring at a crotch when we come back. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. We're trying to get out of this. Why wow, was a girl's crotch? Oh. oh. A woman, actually. But it was oh. young Ben. Oh, there's, no. Well, you can't, there, you there's can't avoid that different. crotch. Ben opens the door with his big bulge. It's frightening. <laughs> I bet his pubic hair is all in disarray like his head hair is, too. It's all messed up and sweating and matted. <laughs> Little hat on his helmet. <laughs> We do think that Ben's hung like a retard. I don't know why. We have why. said that for many years. I'm dying to know what Ben's packing, and not in a gay way. I just want a girl to tell me. It's either ben, here's what Ben is. Ben either has the type of dick that you open that you as a man you go Jesus, or it's three inches with elephantitis of the testicles. No, Ben told me he's two inches from the floor. No, really, <laughs> Ben told me he's four inches wide. <laughs> you stink. <laughs> wow. Coming up next on Opie and Anthony, Jim Norton sings. Forget me not, you sightless taunt. <laughs> your dog just shit on my rug. Thought that was pretty fucking funny, didn't you? How's that for a sketch? The Opie and Anthony Show. You don't do sketches, stupid. I was walking down the street, and some construction guy was shouting at me. Hey, show me your cans. So I did. And he plummeted 17 floors and was impaled on a forklift. 
but my tits look great. Please, wow responsibly. A public service announcement of the Opie and Anthony Show. It's the O&A virus. <laughs>